Hello and good afternoon and welcome back to Real Talk with Real Entrepreneurs. I am your co-host, Adrian Graham, CEO and founder of Empower Me Corporation, along with my guest, my special guest, Marissa Levin, and my co-host, Stephanie C. Harper. Today we're going to be talking about accountability and advisory boards and all that fun stuff that goes into building and growing and scaling your business, which is very apropos because Marissa has released a book called Built to Scale. And we're going to let her talk about that book in a little bit. But I wanted you to tune into this broadcast today because I think there is an important message that is to be learned from Marissa's book and also from what we're going to be talking about today. Small business owners have to play big. But if they're not playing big and they're not paying attention to growing and scaling their businesses on a grander level, they'll be stuck in that perpetual flux or, or whatever you want to call it to keep them at the smaller level. Most small business owners are content with just being, you know, a small enterprise and they're ready to go ahead and say, let me just service my clients and that's it. But a lot of people such as myself and Marissa and Stephanie have bigger dreams of growing our businesses to the next level and beyond and to be able to run with the big dogs, so to speak, and to compete on a bigger and higher level. Well, today we're going to talk with Marissa about what led her to write this book, Big uh, built to scale and we're going to talk about some of the strategies that you can use to implement your own advisory board figure out how to make sure that you're being held accountable because yeah as a CEO you're not only accountable to your clients and your team members but you have to be accountable to yourself and I think that's an important step that we all miss because we figure as long as we're doing for everyone else and we're making sure that everyone else is taken care of, we're not staying accountable or true to the things that it is that we need to do to grow our businesses. So let me introduce Marissa. Hey, Marissa, welcome to the show. How are so, you? It's great to be here. I'm, I'm doing really well. And you know, one of my favorite passions is definitely helping other business owners and entrepreneurs. So I really appreciate you having me on the show to be able to kind of share some of my experience and my wisdom on how I've built a business over the last 20 years. Absolutely. Now, do you have a copy of the book with you? I do. That's what I just grabbed. Yep. So, so everybody this is, the book. This is Built to Scale right here. Yep. And you guys have to definitely go and get this book. Before we get started, where can they find the book? So they can go to my, uh, my blog website, which is SuccessfulCulture.com. That's www.SuccessfulCulture.com. That's my second company. It's a platform where I, I write a blog on organizational culture and leadership, tapping into my 20 years of business ownership and growth expertise to help business owners get unstuck, to get to their next level, to push through their challenges from a strategic perspective. And if you go to SuccessfulCulture.com, the information on the book is there. It is also on Amazon. There are about 20 different five-star reviews on there. The book has gone global. Uh, I actually have clients mm -hmm literally all over the world. I'm working with CEOs in uh, New Zealand, in the Netherlands, in Australia, Canada, helping CEOs really figure out what they need to do to mm -hmm. have the growth that they want for 2013, 14, and 15 and beyond. So um, the book is, is globally uh, well received and you can get it on Amazon or SuccessfulCulture.com. Mm -hmm. Good, 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 good. Good, good, good. I really highly recommend you guys. I was able to read the book um, over this past weekend. You know, I have so much going on. And there's so many nuggets of information in there. And what I love about Marissa's book is that it's straight to the point. There's not a lot of fluff and extra stuff in there that you really don't need to kind of sell the point or drive the point home. She's not promoting her business. She's giving you the straight mm -hmm to the point facts about what it takes to scale and grow your business. So definitely you have to go out and, and get this book because it is it is something that I recommend to any CEO who is looking to scale their business on a big on a bigger scale and who isn't afraid to think big about their business. Now Marissa give really quickly just a brief overview for people who are just tuning in sure. what they can expect when they read this book. Now what's, what is the end result of this that you want people to walk away with when they read this book? Okay so this is this is built to scale for people who just joined this is built to scale and I wrote the book last year 
because I put in an advisory board. My business is about $11 million right now in revenue. Our plan is to hit the $20 million mark in, uh, in our 20th year, which is 2015. So my growth goal inside of my company, Information Experts, it, the mantra is 20 for 20 in 15. That's $20 million for our 20th year in 2015. Mm -hmm. And along the, the way, over the last 20 years, you, you, when you're a business owner, you hit these plateaus, you hit these stone walls, and you just don't know how to get, the, get around them. And one of the things that one of my mentors taught me is he said, you should go out and you should build an advisory board. And that was a few years ago. And I really didn't even know what that was or what that meant or how you did it. And so I basically set along the path of finding the right advisors who could be around me uh, so that I can get to the next level. And when I went out and I tried to find information on building an advisory board, there was literally no model out there. There was no process at all. I, I, I found articles like in Inc. Magazine and Forbes and Fortune and different, you know, different books on how you build a nonprofit board or how uh, corporate governance applies to, pri to publicly held companies or why it's important to have a board, but literally no process on how to do it. So I followed my own process and at the end of the journey, I realized I had created a model and that model is scale. And so that is select compensate, associate, leverage, and then evaluate, evolve, and exit. And it literally is every single thing that a business owner needs to do to find the people they need to select them. How do you compensate them? And there's, there's an interview in here with my attorney who is a wealth management advisor, who's an equity planning attorney, who knows how to give equity and stock options and uh, phantom stock to either uh, board members or employees or shareholders. I did a full 90 minute interview with him and transcribed it in here on the full uh, equity option plans that you can give to board members in a restricted format so that it minimizes your risk and mm -hmm. is tied to performance. So there's compensation in here, that's the C, monetary, non-monetary, equity, trade, Associate, how do you associate a board into your organization from a legal perspective, but also how do you integrate them into the company so that they are an extension of your firm and that they work with your executive team and they truly help your organization get to the next level? What are the 35 ways you can actually leverage your board? I go through all the different ways you can actually leverage your board. And then how do you evaluate, evolve, and exit your board members when it's time to roll them off because a board is a fluid dynamic entity it isn't something that you do once and you're all set if you're getting the right board members on 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 board then you're going to be outgrowing them in some respect and so how do you evaluate them for where you are right now how do you evolve your board as your company grows and then when it's time to move them off how do you do it in such a way that leaves the door open for future business for future referrals that everybody feels good at. So that's the scale model. Select, compensate, associate, leverage, and then evaluate, evolve, and exit. And as I work with CEOs who say to me, Marissa, I really want to put in a board and I don't know how to do it, can you help me? And all the templates are in the back that you need, by the way. This really is a do-it-yourself. I work with CEOs and when I get in there, I realize, and we were talking about this on the phone, Adrian that usually these business owners aren't even ready to implement a board because they have more work that they need to do inside. They either need to refine their mission, their vision, their values, they need to do their strategic plan, they need to do a customer analysis, they need to do competitive analysis. There's work that needs to be done from a strategic perspective to work on the business and I help, I'm helping CEOs do that work to prep them so that they get the right people at the table so that they can go to their next level of growth. So uh, that's, that's really what it is in a nutshell. I love helping other business owners and CEOs get to that next level. It's been quite a journey getting towards that $20 million work for me as I've, boot, as I've uh, bootstrapped and it's just really rewarding to be able to use my experiences to help others. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know what? The one thing, when I mention advisory boards, and I don't know if you get the same response, a lot of people figure that they can choose their friends or people that they know to be their advisory board. Sure. And I think that's the biggest mistake that any person can choose when they're looking to grow their business. What are your thoughts about choosing the people that you're comfortable and familiar with to be on your advisory board? So that's a great question because I actually, it isn't just that I go through the model in here and by the way this isn't just based, this isn't just based on 
my experience, I did research with over 150 other business owners on how they use their board, what their success stories have been, what their horror stories have been, and in the book, 30 of them are profiled. So it's not just me. This is about going out into the field, getting, getting experiential understanding from other people. And I also talk about differences between boards of advisors, boards of directors, the connection between boards and culture, uh, the role of minorities and women on boards and how they reflect the organization and, and where the organization is going. Um, and to get to your question about using your friends and family, I talk about the four stages of a board. And typically when a business does launch, they will go to the people that they know. And that is a huge mistake because your friends and family, while they usually have good intentions, <laughs> they usually are happy for you, not always, mm -hmm. uh, they most likely do not understand entrepreneurship. And, and I know me as an entrepreneur, I get the crazy look from my brothers or from my friends of, why do you work so many hours and why are you so <laughs> goal-oriented and how do you have so much energy? I mean, if you're not an entrepreneur, people don't get you. So mm -hmm. expecting to have advice for growth from people who don't even understand why you're doing what you're doing, it's just mm -hmm. dangerous. So you yeah. definitely want to bypass the entire friends and family. And then typically what business owners do, and again, it's in here, is the level, the four phases of a board. What you really want to do what, when, you, when you initially start out is you go to your, your banker, your attorney, your accountant, your financial planner, because they are advisors. And if they're working with a small business owner, then that's who their clientele is. But the problem is, is that that is a very narrow view. So that might be a good band-aid approach to an advisory team. But as you grow, you're really going to want to go out and look for people who really fully understand your business and can be an extension of your business and be trusted advisors. And the idea of masterminding, okay, and we talked about this, Napoleon Hill's mastermind idea is where multiple minds come together to basically form another mind. And if you look at your advisory board or your advisory team like that, you've got this group of experts that you've brought on that have dedicated swim lanes. So you might have an advisory team member who can get you into a certain account. Or you may have an advisory member who really understands your industry. Or maybe you have someone in there who is a direct connection or a gateway to funding and investment. Or maybe you have someone in there who can get you a certification. What you want to do, and which I do explain in the book on what to look for, and you don't want a jack of all trades at your advisory team, is you want to find the people who, uh, who really uh, are correlating, they're correlated to your specific needs, and they really become your extension of your entire executive organization. Mm -hmm. And the last thing that a CEO wants to do is be a bottleneck to growth. So that advisory team ends up working with your entire executive team. My, advisory, my advisors don't just help me. They're there to help the entire organization, and they make a phenomenal recruitment and retention tool as well as we're looking to hire top talent. Top talent. Okay. Good, great to hear. Let, let me just make a quick, we have a question from Kathy. Great. Um, Kathy Brown, but I wanted to just make a quick announcement. Everybody, if you're going to mute, mute your own self. Don't mute anyone else. If you <laughs> feel that someone is has some background noise, put it in the chat view and we'll figure out who it is and, and we'll address it that way because then we have trouble taking ourselves off of mute. So don't mute anybody else, especially not the co-host, not myself, not Stephanie C. Harper, and definitely not Marissa, our guest. So if you have some background noise, you can mute yourself but request in the chat room to mute someone else. So let me just, Stephanie, do you want to jump in here into the conversation before we take a question? Sure. Good morning. I just wanted to tell you that you are um, right on target, right down my lane. When I started my business um, back in 2001, I did go with friends and family, but I went with friends and family who were doing things that I was not able to do. Mm -hmm. I did find an accountant. I did find someone who was in finance. I did find someone who was doing the things that I felt that I was not um, strongly suited in. So I didn't have an opportunity to read the book. But to hear you say that just lets me know that I went the right route. Oh, good. So good. That. That's great. No, hey, you're <laughs> welcome. And congrats on your success. Thank yeah, you. Definitely. And plus, Stephanie and I are accountability partners. Yes, we are. Yeah, we Excellent. stay on each other when we need to. <laughs> That's what you need to do. That's yeah. Right. So I want to bring Kathy Brown in the conversation. Um, she started off um, 
the her chat session, you know, she said she's on an advisory board and she's here because she's interested in what a board should be accomplishing. And then she had a question. So you know, she said she's not sure that they're accomplishing what they should be accomplishing. So Kathy, I want you to come on and ask your question. And hi. Hi. Am I unmuted? <laughs> hi, Kathy. <You're> unmuted. <laughs> okay. Well, this is this is a timely um, conversation for me. I'm I'm really looking at it from both sides because I've wanted to form a board for myself because um, I know that's important. But I was invited to be on an advisory board first, and it was interesting how he picked the people that he picked. He picked them from a collection of all the people that he knew around, and they each had certain uh, certain strengths that he liked. And all he told me was that he liked me for my creativity, for my out-of-the-box thinking, which is great, but I'm not sure what to do with it, and I feel like our advisory board is running around um, getting a lot of emails but not being told what's expected of any of us, and that's one part of what I'm, I'm trying to learn in this, but my question is, when someone takes the time to be a part of this, there's a lot of time involved, and mm -hmm. I have people that I would love to have on my advisory board, but I know that I, they're good, and so they're busy. And how, what kind of compensation or arrangement do you have so that people are willing to give of their time for your benefit? So those, so which, do you want me to address the one about the company first, or do you want me to address the situation of how do you go about and you ask? Whichever one you think is more n needed to be answered, because I have all kinds of questions. <laughs> okay. So, the, so the, the board that you're on, my guess is that, and it's very typical what he did, that he finds, you find someone that you really like, you have that chemistry with, you click, and you go, I think this person could really help me grow my business. But the problem is, is if you haven't really thought about how they how they specifically fit, like where are your holes in your organization. So uh, what I, I mean, what I do, what, and what's in here, and I'll try and show the template, is so there's this little template here, I don't know how well you can see it, but it says what expertise do I need? And so what I, what I do is when I work with CEOs, I really help them I do a full SWOT analysis with their executive team to figure out what their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats are, and do a full comprehensive needs assessment of the organization to say where are your holes, okay? And once you do that, then you can fill out this chart about what expertise do I need. And so it's broken into short-term problems or goals and objectives, which is within the next six months potential solutions to problems or, or paths to achieve the goals, and then potential advisors who could help me with those specific problems. And that what you're saying is that basically he started with column number three and went, here are some potential advisors that could help me, but he didn't do the analysis up front to figure out what swim lanes he needed. Okay. Uh, so, well, I'm not sure. I think he did to some degree because he's very... Um lacking in marketing and specifically new marketing like digital marketing and that's my strength but I don't feel like in my case I, I know what my strength is but I don't feel like any of what we're doing is being focused on okay this is Kathy's niche um, this is where I need some feedback I feel like I'm getting all these emails and I and and they're things that have nothing to do with what my strength is. So then he hasn't set up performance-based objectives for you, is that right? Like he hasn't said, by the end of quarter one, I need X, Y, and Z done for my digital marketing. By the end of quarter two, and typically you want to start with your big quarter, your, like your annual goal. Like at the end of 2013, I'm going to have a full digital media campaign that will have these components. And maybe he can come to you and say, what does that even mean? What should be in there? And you can actually create the plan for him and then back them out and say, okay, we've got 20 deliverables of digital marketing that you know that you want to create. In quarter one, you need to do this. And in quarter two, you need to do this so that you have bite-sized goals that are, that are tied to a larger goal. But if he hasn't given you that direction, my advice to you is if you do want to help him grow and be part of this advisory team, that you actually have to ask him and say, what is the overall larger goal for the digital marketing piece and can you and I basically have a brainstorming session or a one-to-one -one session where we're putting in very smart, I'm a big smart goals fan, so specific, measurable, actionable, results oriented with a time frame. That's it. Like there should never be any other goal, okay? Every single goal should be a smart goal. Specific, measurable, action oriented, uh, results oriented with a time frame. That's it. So what what goals are he is he giving you? 
and and he needs to okay so that that's where the disconnect is mm -hmm. because you don't want to be busy you want to be productive mm -hmm. right? I agree with that one I love that what you just said yeah, busy but, but yeah there we get applause from Elaine busy but not productive <laughs> that's I could care less how many hours someone spends on some if there's no end result and it's not good who cares that's exactly right I mean it's all about productive it's all about having that end goal that smart goal at the end and what are you doing in the bite-sized pieces to work towards that goal mm -hmm. that's it everything that you should be doing should be working towards a goal that CEO the ownership is on him to come up with that goal and if he can't come up with that goal he can say to you I need help figuring out what that goal is but you've got to be working towards a goal yeah. period it just has to be done mm -hmm. I agree help? with that can I can I just yeah. um I think one of the things, as I'm listening to you talk and thinking about some of the conversations that um, that I've had with my clients, and then of course for those of you who are not aware, my background is human resources, and so putting together um, advisory boards, I think one of the things that many CEOs maybe miss the mark, and maybe this is something that you can speak on, is that they they don't really get the difference between an advisory board and a board of directors. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're asking people to kind of help them for free because there is no voting power with an advisory board. There is no fiduciary, you know, responsibility with the advisory board. I think maybe for the CEO, they don't realize what they can or can't ask. Yeah. Now, for me, when I chose, I chose people, you know, when I went to them and asked them, I said, listen, this is what I need you for because I don't know about what you know. But I think most of the times people form these boards because it's maybe the popular thing to do or people say, well, do you have an advisory board or do you have a board of directors? Do you have those people that are helping you? So maybe if you can talk about the difference between the two mm -hmm. and how, you know, how CEOs can, you know, can, can reach that goal. I think that may be part of the problem in not getting the goal because they don't know that they're able to ask for it. And that's a great point. And in the chat in chapter one, <laughs> I answer that Sorry, question. Sorry, I don't have the book. <laughs> no, that's okay. No, and you'll get the book. But you, you know, that is, you know, what is the what is a board of advisors, and how does it differ from a board of directors? So, a, a board of advisors, a, a, so a board of directors are basically are individuals elected by a corporation shareholders to oversee the management of the corporation they actually do assume legal responsibility for corporate activities they are also on the hook actually to get sued a board of advisors the advisory board members cannot get sued advisory board members are basically I mean they're people that you pay but they have no legal or fiduciary obligation to the organization for a board of directors, let's say that the board of directors gives a direction to the company and says, you should invest in this product or you should not go after this client or you should go after this client and then something fails miserably, they actually can be sued by customers or employees or shareholders or you know anyone tied to the company. Advisory board members do not have that type of uh, threat you know, or, or burden hanging over their head. A board of advisors is really a less formal alternative and it consists of about three to seven members and has no legal responsibility and they're people that are handpicked so um, that's really what the what the big difference is um, and and that also gives them a lot more leeway creative leeway in terms of solutions and ideas and at the end of the day the CEO really doesn't have to listen to anybody but if you're going to go ahead and you're going to invest the time and you're going to pay the money you know leverage your advisory team if you're going to bring them in Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I did want to get back. Was it Kathy who had the second question? Yeah. Okay. So uh, you were asking about compensation for your board, right? So, you know, the thing, it's interesting. There are people out there that actually make a career or build their resumes on board service, like boards of director service, okay? Those are the people you want to avoid. Okay, there are so many amazing people out there who just want to be able to give back to the small business community that basically want to pay it forward and want to help small businesses grow. They meet a small business owner, they believe in their idea, they believe in their company. There are a lot of retired people that are out there that, you know, just have decades of experience and want to contribute in some way. An advisory board position is a very, very part time position. 
depending right. on how you set it up, you know, you might only be meeting quarterly, right, for a day. My advisors, and I made it very clear from the beginning, and in the appendix I have the board search documents in here and the board candidate interview. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, some of the things on, you know, for essentials for all board members, you know, solid track record of high integrity and strong character, generosity of spirit, a recognized seasoned expert, has already accomplished what you're trying to accomplish, is well connected, is known well to play with others, is not a yes person, is available to show up, is reliable. Those are just some of the things that you want to look for. And then in here, I also have all the things you want to avoid. You want to avoid the jack of all trades, okay, because you want to really give them dedicated swim lanes. You want to avoid someone who is who the first thing that they're thinking about is compensation because that isn't going to be a fit for a small business who has a very limited budget. In the book I get very creative on ways that you can compensate. You can compensate monetarily like we do give uh, uh, we give a, a stipend, a check for the in-person board meetings for each board member but then also in between meetings, my board members are available to me really anytime I want to talk to them. They attend my sales meetings, they review my emails, a lot of my government contracting people um, you know, need help from, from two of my board members to make sure we're not writing anything that's going to pose conflicts of interest. They introduce me to great account, uh, to, to great contacts in some of our government agencies. They've helped us stand up a project management office. I'm very upfront with upfront when I'm looking for a board member to say I'm not only looking for you to show up quarterly, but I really want you to be integrated into my company. Mm -hmm. And are you okay with that? And you have to set that expectation up upfront. So um, there are ways that you know you can compensate, like I said, quarterly, and then they're available to you for as much as you need them. You can uh, do things like you know, like you do digital marketing. You might have someone who's coming on your board that is looking to start up an LLC and maybe they need help with their marketing and so they can sit on your board and you can help them. I've had a board member actually ask me to sit on the board of another nonprofit um, because that's what was important to them and that was basically payment. I had a potential board member who contacted me and he said, all I want is I want intellectual property license for your model for scale because he works with other business owners. He said, I want to be able to basically market scale as one of my products and in exchange I'll be on your board. So there's lots of ways that you can think about and then there is the whole stock option piece which is very complicated but is in here explained really well. I'm just not a finance person but there are lots of different options for compensation. It's, it's not something that you should be intimidated by. You can make it work with the right people. Right. And that's the key point of it. You know, everyone thinks that it has to be like Coca-Cola or Nike where they get these extravagant checks and sometimes they don't even get the extravagant checks to be part of the, the advisory board. But I think that if you make it, and, and Marissa, you tell me if you agree, if you make it so that there is something more fruitful that they can have from it, from the Absolutely. other than the monetary, I mean, of course, yeah, we all want to be Long compensated. Term. Long but, term. Yeah, but give, yeah, give them, give them I don't want to say skin in the game, but give them an incentive to yeah. want to see the business move forward and to grow and expand. So yeah. if the more in the loop you keep your board, the more connected and invested they'll see they'll feel in the growth of your business, correct? Yeah, and I'm and I'm looking at the interview that I did and uh, what he what my expert Wayne Zell actually said is you don't want to give them a large chunk up front, okay? Like he Hello? Are you there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with you. He recommend. He actually said you might give someone one half of a percentage a year for four years, mm -hmm. and that takes them to two percent. And you might not think two percent is that much as an incentive, but if you're growing a business to fifty million dollars, that's a million dollars, which is not a bad gig for helping someone part time to grow their business. Right. So he, you know, I, I mean, I have talked small business out owners after they've read my book. I've talked them out of. They start their business and they're like, but I really need help and I'm going to give them 10% or 15%. Well, 10% of nothing is, is, is really small. 
But 10% of $15 million for showing up very part-time, that is a lot of money. Exactly. So, you know, half percent, one percent to each board member. If you've got four board members and you're giving away half percent to each, you're giving away right there two percent of your company each year. You need to be really careful with how much you give away and you also need to make it performance based. So at the end of the year, after you have reviewed your, your agreement with your board members, because you only want to put them in for a year, you want to review and if they have not delivered what you're hoping for them to deliver for whatever reason. It's not about the blame, it's about performance. If they've not delivered, then you want to have what's known as a restricted stock agreement in place where basically you can buy that piece back for a penny. And then you don't have someone who's tied to your firm who, you know, from a legal perspective or from an equity perspective, who's not really involved at all in helping your company grow. So there are ways that you can set it up so that it's performance based so that there's a restricted stock agreement in place and then you exit in such a way that everybody feels okay with the way that it's turned out. Right, absolutely. And for more details on that, make sure you buy her book, Built yeah. to Scale. <laughs> buy the book, people. So yeah, I mean, you know, it makes absolute sense and I love that you said about putting a time limit on it because mm -hmm. at first people thought I was crazy when I told them I rotated my board out. Each yeah. year or every other year or whatever it was in the beginning and that's because people change personalities change commitments change and your objectives change so whoever got you from here to here may not be the person to get you to here so you have to be cognizant of that and you have to always check out and see who's working for your business now there's I can say there's one person who has stayed on my advisory board for the last five years who is phenomenal she hasn't gone anywhere so and I hope she doesn't but and she knows who she, who she is but you know it's great to as Marissa says every year do that review and figure out who it is that you need to replace who you can bring in for mm -hmm. fresh talent fresh blood and who has an interest in helping your business because like I said if they don't have if they don't feel like they have a, a connection or a vested interest it's okay I'm on this advisory board I'm getting a check okay it's good and they sit back for minimal work that's really not what you want your advisory board is to do and I think a lot of people think that an advisory board is just there and only when I need to make a phone call do you do you find a lot of people who have that mentality to think that's what their purpose is just when I need to call them they're there yeah, and also what I found is a lot of people don't pay their advisory board and then they wonder why they're not getting anything out of it, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, you have to you have to you have to find some way to compensate them, you know? Even if it's just something little, you have to find a way that that you're going to compensate them. And if you only have a few members, you know, if you're very small and you're just starting out, you only need one or two or three, you know, three advisory board members, find find a way so that they see that you're investing in the relationship and in the growth and then it gives you the right to pick up that phone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I want to move on to the accountability part. Sure. Because that, that is something that we, as if you guys don't know, Marissa does a show um, on Sundays where in DC, in the DC area, right? Yeah, DC. it's on, it's on ABC uh, mm -hmm. and I'm the region small business expert on ABC on the show called Washington Business Report. So I, mm -hmm. it's on Sunday mornings. And if you go to successfulculture.com and you click on in the news, then all of my, I think there's six or seven of my last ones are mm -hmm. on there and the segments are not long they're only like six or seven minutes long with Rebecca Cooper who's the anchor but they're very structured on topics and the one that I just did this past Sunday it's up on the site already is all mm -hmm. about accountability and goal setting and mm -hmm. then my blog on at successfulculture.com the latest um, blog entry I link to the show and it's got all the information on why you want to set have an accountability partner, partner how you find the partner Mm -hmm. what to look for in the partner and what the strategies are for making sure that you set up a partnership that really works and gets you towards your goals and then I included five or six success stories of accountability partners and I included you Adrian so um, so it's just it's just good information about what to look for and how to actually I'm all about process what mm -hmm. is the process to make your accountability partnership really thrive and get you towards your goals Right, absolutely. And again, you can pick a friend. In in your case, Marissa, the woman that you pick, Anne, who's mm -hmm. your accountability partner, mm -hmm. you guys had met at an event, correct? 
Yeah, actually, it's kind of funny. Well, I met her. I mean, we we had seen each other at uh, multiple events, but then I, she met. I met her at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> So, but she had, I mean, we've known each other, you know, and she likes to tell people that she stalked me. I mean, I don't really remember <laughs> that. I really don't. Um, but it was just kind of funny because she got on the stair mill next to me and that was kind of like how the whole friendship kind of started. But mm -hmm. yeah, she, she uh, you know, is very goal oriented like me and uh, there, we have a lot of synergy in, in that we both have small businesses, being both woman-owned businesses, you know, women business owners have unique, unique challenges, we both are, are moms, you know, so there's, there's a lot of different uh, synergies there, and so we're able, and we share a lot of the same philosophies from a, a lifestyle perspective in terms of exercise, diet, meditation, things of that nature, so there's just a lot of alignment in a lot of ways, Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why it works well for us. Right. Now, one of the things that I, I took mention of or took notice of what you mentioned was the fact that regardless of what, every week you guys are on a call. Mm -hmm. You talk to her every single week to make sure that you, you're held accountable. Yeah. And I know for me, I have several accountability partners, and Stephanie is one of them. And I get so busy and wrapped up in my day-to-day -day life. It's like, oh, I don't feel, not today. I don't want to do it. But I realize that that hurts me more because I need to be held accountable. Now, yeah. I believe that there, you know, depending on your situation, you can talk weekly. Heck, you can talk daily if you have that much to say, or you can talk monthly. Oops, sorry about that, guys. You can talk monthly mm -hmm. and still be maintain accountability. Now, my question is. How do you how do you find that right fit for you? How do you know how many times a week, month, year, or whatever that you should connect with your accountability? How, what's the importance of determining that? So, I, I mean, for me, I wanted to be in touch with her for you know for uh, every week, and um, we send our lists to each other either like the Sunday night before. Are you there, Adrian? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. I'm just, okay. just um, the phone. <laughs> so, so we send our list um, ahead of time, you know, the Sunday night before, and then you know, so I, I got her list in the in my inbox, and I know the things now that she's working on, you know, both from her business personally as well as diet, exercise, meditation, the things that she's really going towards. And so she keeps that list printed out on her desktop, and she's going to check it off. And then when we talk on Thursday, I'm going to say to her, so where are you on your list? And so she'll do the same thing for me. And so it just keeps us very much on track. I am an accountability coach for a group of entrepreneurs through uh, EO Accelerator. EO Accelerator is a program that our, our EO chapter in DC has. It's for business owners from 250K to a million, and the goal of EO Accelerator is to get you over the million dollar mark. And part of the learning structure for that, they, there are quarterly learning days, but there are also accountability coaches. And so I'm an accountability coach, and I meet with four business owners who are Accelerator participants. I meet with them once a month. Um, when there aren't learning days, so I'll so like I'll meet with them uh, February, March, and April, and then we have a learning day in May, and then I'll meet with them you know June, July, and August. Then we have a learning day in September. So I meet with them, and um, what I what I have noticed is that it you know because I'm so focused on the smart goals, and some of them had what I call BHAGs. You may have heard that term, big, hairy, audacious goals. Mm -hmm. You can't you you can't move forward with BHAGs with the big, hairy, audacious goals. You may have a BHAG, but you need to have the smart goals that that back up from it. And so, mm -hmm. meeting with them once a month is definitely more than enough because they're so they're still getting used to the idea. They're still wrapping their arms around the idea of smart goals mm -hmm. and. And and it, and it's a it's it's a hard thing to grasp if it's if that's not your mindset. And so the monthly check-ins for them are enough. But I do email them in between, and I just say, let me know if you're having any trouble moving forward. How are things going? And I literally give them three goals. Like they'll come to the meeting and they'll have a list of a dozen things, and I'll go, uh-uh, no. Nope. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, no, 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 no. You need three things because if you're going to try and do 12 in a month, you're going to fail at all of them. So mm -hmm. scratch the 12. Let's pick three that are mission critical, that are essential <laughs> <Love> that. <laughs> for you to do now 
okay? Because the other stuff isn't going to get done, and you're and and you're not going to do it well if you don't do these three things first. Mm -hmm. There's like I'm working with a I'm actually working with a business owner in Australia, which is interesting because we have, we're, we have to do it all by Skype, and mm -hmm. he's 15 hours ahead. So a lot of times I'll have I know so like I do meetings with him at 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. on Sunday morning on Sunday evenings because then he's just starting his day. It's Monday at 8 a.m. there, so I do a lot of Sunday evening calls with him, and. We went through the whole entire SWOT analysis and needs assessment, and I delivered to him, you know, a three-page document of what expertise do I need, and the four things that were urgent. I mean, he had ten things on his list, okay, mm -hmm. but the things that were urgent is he had to get his mission, vision, and values redefined because he's switching from being like a commodity service to a value add. Like he's an accounting firm, but they're adding more value-added consulting and so that's going to change his whole mission vision and values and mm -hmm. that's the foundation of the company so mm -hmm. I said I said Paul before we do anything else we got to do our executive session to get your mission vision and values realigned and then once we do that we can build your strategic plan and then right. once we do that you need to do your customer analysis and your competitive analysis and once those are done then we can move into your marketing but we can't touch your marketing plan until the other four things are done. So how do you look at your priorities and really put them in order and, and the goals that you have? Because you might have a dozen goals, but, but there are going to be one or two that rise to the top that you need to get done first. Right. So, so that's why like when I work with these smaller businesses and Accelerator and they come into these meetings with like a dozen goals and I'm like, sorry, not happening. We need to pick three that's it, just three, and then when I see you in a month, I need to know that those threes are done, and then right. we'll move on to the next three. So, right. yeah, was that a long? That was a long-winded. No, no, that's good. That's good. Okay. We have our our Google evangelists are in the chat room giving you the praise <laughs> of Google Plus, saying that Marissa, you should try Google Plus Hangouts better than Skype. So yeah. Oh not, yes, absolutely. Thank yeah. you, Adrian. I could not contain myself. I almost <laughs> jumped in and said it. All right, yeah, that's actually a good idea. It's, that is so funny. Idea. But the problem is, is like a lot of times I'm I'm working with a conference room, you know, like I'm not dealing with like it multiple works. people calling in. I'm dealing with a conference room of, you know, six people and so they're just like rotating around the table. But it's yeah. that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Stephanie, you want to add to that? Because Stephanie, I'll tell you, Stephanie kicks my butt when I even when I don't like it and I call her all kind of names when we, you know. But you she keeps me she keeps me honest. So you want to add permission to, to do so. <laughs> you well, want to add to I definitely suggest going though to, to my blog and and just looking at that blog on accountability and it's it's all the steps you need to find the right person right. and how to lead a good accountability partnership. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely. And the one thing for me about accountability, um, I think one of the things that we as business owners, you know, one of the things that you said earlier is that the CEO doesn't need permission from anyone. But if we're going to ask people to hold us accountable, and if we're going to ask people to walk the journey with us, then we have to let them pull our coattail as well. Oh my God, completely. And I think that's one of the, you know, we get the, I'm the CEO at the no, end of no, no, no. my thing, oh, you know, God. and that's all fine, well, and dandy. But, you know, it's almost like that that HR person or, or that HR or that business owner who hires someone and then won't let them do their job. You know, oh, no, no. it's like no. we've all had that one boss that that, right. you know, that stands over us and won't let us do what we're hired to do. And so I think when we become the CEO, we have to remember that we hired that person to stand over us. <laughs> mm -hmm. I am all about empowerment. Let me tell you, I mean, I am all about collaboration and empowerment. And I will tell you that when you're in, when you have an organization and you make a hire or you want to bring in an advisory board member, you cannot shove it down anybody's throat. You need to get full buy-in from the executive team. You need to have champions inside your company who are backing you. And the truth is, is even though it's our company, our, our employees bring tremendous knowledge, insight, and perspective into our company that we don't have, okay? Yeah. I always say that everybody in my company works for a different company. And what I mean by that is that they all bring their own perspective, okay? When they walk in the door, they're seeing a company different than what I'm seeing. 
because Amen. their their day to day interactions and who they are interacting with, whether it's internal or external, and what they have to accomplish, and the barriers that they're they're seeing to their progress, they have totally different perspectives than I have, and their perspectives are so valuable. They right. see things we don't see. They know things we don't know, and, that's and so. The key. And we have to listen to them because, you know, we're even if even if we're completely integrated into our company, we are still in somewhat of an ivory tower. And the other thing that's interesting is that, for me, you know, I'll have I'll have new employees starting, and I can't believe you know I'm 45, and so I can't even believe that I'm like old enough that like I have like these 20 or five year olds starting, and I'm almost twice their age, and they'll be like, it's good to see you, Miss Levin, and I'm like. Miss Levin, that's my mother-in-law. Okay. Like I'm Marissa, you know. Like I mean, to I don't want there to be an age barrier or a or a hierarchical barrier, even though I know that's a little unrealistic. And mm -hmm. so, you know, for for everybody on this on this call that is a business owner that is the CEO, and I actually have a blog entry on growing into the title of CEO. I talk about that in one of my entries. Our peers, our peer groups. Our CEOs, right? Like, that's who we hang out with. That's who we interact with. Well, guess what? If you're not a business owner, if you're an employee, that can be really intimidating. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they don't see us just as like regular people who put on our pants one leg at a time and we lose our keys and we bang our knees on our dressers and we, you know, like are a mess in the morning and like we got to take the dog out and get like. They don't see us like that, especially the younger generations, the 20, 25 year olds. Yeah. They see us as like these larger than life people. Iconoclastic. And, so, and we need to, and we have to make an effort to connect with them on a regular basis inside mm -hmm. our company. And, uh, you know, it's just being cognizant of it, you know? You said something I thought was pretty interesting. When you're in the middle of it and uh, you're doing it every day, the people on the outside sometimes can see things you don't see. Absolutely. Uh, hate, hate to give a football analogy, but I'm going to. That's my background. Uh, it's kind right. of like, it's kind of like, and, hey, it's hot right now. You know, the Super Bowl's coming up. So it's kind of like those Wait a minute. I need to know. Are you Ravens or Patriots? I just need to know. Oh, neither, but I'll take Patriots. <laughs> oh, oh, I got to cut you off. No. Uh -huh. Bye, Chris. Bye. Yeah. Get off. I'm Dallas Cowboys, so we don't really have anything to talk about. Okay. Uh, I'm in Dallas. So it's kind of like, okay, uh, it's, like a, it's like a quarterback watching the blitz and all that. He thinks he knows what's going on, but really the coach is up high seeing the whole field, analyzing it from a different point of view, tell him in his ear, hey, what happened on that last play? Right. They're not looking down the field. So it's kind of the same analogy because they Very can see it better. Even though they're in the middle of the game, the people up higher see the whole vantage point. I agree with you to an extent, okay? Like as as the football to use the football analogy, that coach can be up high and he literally can see his entire play, play, entire playing field. I can tell you with my company, I can't see my whole playing field. I just can't because we have You're multiple, the quarterback. You're the have, quarterback. Yeah, we have multiple locations. We have, you know, dozens and dozens of clients. I just can't be the eyes and ears everywhere, but I do I totally agree with your analogy that both perspectives are so important. They're both critical yeah. to success. Yeah. And that, that goes back to, you know, why did you ask that person to be on your advisory board mm -hmm. to begin with? You know, if you if you wanted them there just to be able, you know, maybe, you know, you picked them because they, you know, were leaders in the community or leaders in their industry or whatever. And when you went out to find them, you initially got them for whatever reason. You know, whatever the case was, you got them on the board. Right. But now they're here. Utilize them. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I share I've shared this story with Adrian all the um and many of the listeners before. But when I was getting ready to do the first issue of Career Magazine, I was so afraid to put myself on the cover. You know, I didn't want I was trying to separate my personal brand from mm -hmm. my business, from right. my magazine. And one of my advisory boards, I, I found everybody that I thought was more qualified than me to be on the cover of that magazine. And one of my advisory board members said, absolutely not. No way. Get off my phone. I don't want to hear anything else about it. Have your graphic designer put your face on the cover and talk to me later in victory. And she hung up on me. You know, she absolutely <laughs> hung up on me. It was the end of the discussion. And I was like, no, no, no. But you know what? It was one of the best things. But right. you have to be mindful. She was a marketing brain. And what I saw was I don't want people to think 
that I'm being cocky by putting myself on my own cover. What she saw was down the line. This is going to be a staple piece for you. Yeah. This is going to be a major marketing piece for you. And, and this is your magazine. And even though you're doing it a spin off of your newsletter, you know, all these people that you want to bring in, you've got the life of your magazine to introduce those people to your readership, but not with your initial mm -hmm. um, issue. And I couldn't see that, but she was able to see it. But what I had to do was step back and say, either I trust her or I don't. Right. And I believe right. that she has my best interest in heart or I don't. Mm -hmm. And so I went with her gut. You know, it wasn't my gut. And that goes back to, you know, me being the CEO and me being the shot caller. But I had to step back and take the advice of someone else who saw something that I was unable to yeah. see. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, um, Marissa has a two o'clock hard stop. I mean, you know, guys know that do watch. Steffi and I will continue a little bit longer after the two o'clock mark. But Marissa has a hard stop at two o'clock. So I want to know if there are any questions from anyone here that want to jump in the conversation and ask a question. Just raise your hand. Let me know if you have a question. Anybody? So Kathy was okay. Go ahead, Elaine. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much. This has been so jam-packed with phenomenal information. Oh, that's great. One Thank of the you. best hangouts. Adrian, hats off. Marissa, you're phenomenal. Thank oh, you. wow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're and just trying to bring her back to hangouts. No. <laughs> See, that's what we do here. They don't Except pump you up on Skype. Chris right? said he's rooting really for the Patriots. We can, we can. Yeah, we'll forget hey, him. Hey, hey, I was put on this. Hey, I, I was it. put on the what two to go for. That's the, I'm not for either one of them. <laughs> go Ravens. Understood. Understood. I'm from Baltimore, so that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, any final comments for Marissa? Or no, or I don't have any final comments. I think it was a great show, um, and I think it's one that we definitely should revisit again. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a topic that comes up all the time you know, with small business owners. And I just think that there's not enough information out there about it. I mean, there's the, the basics of how to put one together, so to speak, mm -hmm. but how to actually run one for the effectiveness of your company. There's very little information out there. So we would love to, you know, invite you back. And oh, yeah, I would love to. I even, I even included, I well, I included the uh, first agenda, too. Like, I okay. mean, I gave people no excuses for not getting their board okay. going. You yeah. know, like I think people, it's a conversation that we should have um, ongoing. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. I would love that. And then Marissa said that she's working on an updated edition of the book, correct? Yeah. And yeah, that won't be out until okay. later in the year. Um, so, I mean, this one's definitely, you know, jam-packed with information, but I am going to include the part about gr the ground zero work that you need to be doing. Mm -hmm. So... Hold the book up again. Built to Scale. <laughs> so they can see. There you go. Built to Scale by Marissa Levin. You guys need to get it and catch her Sunday mornings. Go ahead, give your plug. Hold so it up Sunday. so I can take a picture. Here you go. Okay, go ahead. Face and, two, please. And you, you, can e you can email me. Uh, you can email me at, at mlevin at informationexperts.com or Marissa Levin. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, at Marissa at Successful Culture. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. I'm very active, and I love to connect with other like-minded business owners. So, Absolutely. Yeah. She's a real deal, deal guy. Also, Marissa did some writing for Empower Me magazine, so I will share those links later on if you want to catch some of my content there. As well as her blog, Success Culture. Su SuccessfulCulture.com. Yeah, culture. SuccessfulCulture.com. Yeah. Yes, SuccessfulCulture.com. And go ahead about Sunday, the show on Sunday. So that's one once a month, and I'll post those for people who aren't in the D.C. region. They go right up on SuccessfulCulture.com on the, in the news section. It's once a month on ABC's Washington Business Report. I'm the region's small business expert. And uh, Smart CEO Magazine just gave me a syndicated column starting in February. It's called Get On Board on how you build advisory boards. So, yeah, so that will be it. Nice. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. Well, Marissa, thank you so much. for. I know how busy you are. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your tidbits with us and your book. And everybody, please, Built to Scale. You can get it on built Amazon or you can get mm -hmm. it on successfulculture.com. No yep, please Go opt in. Yep. Yes. Yeah, opt into the blog. Find me on LinkedIn. Definitely stay connected. I love helping other business owners. That's why I'm. That is definitely what my purpose is here. That's why I'm awesome. here. 
Yeah, excellent. Yeah. excellent. Okay, well, we're going to let you go ahead. I know you have to go. So right. thank you again. And we'll be in touch offline. Yeah, so. yeah. All right, you guys have a great day and celebrate your wins. Congrats, congrats on what you've built. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you, Marissa. Bye. Bye. Take care. Thanks. So you guys, I'm See glad ya. you enjoyed the broadcast. I'm glad you enjoyed all of the information that Marissa had to share with us. Did anybody have any final questions for myself or Stephanie that maybe we could help you with or Anything you want to add to the conversation except football talk, Chris? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean to start a firestorm there. No, no I'm I, a little salty because my Giants are gone, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, no, that's great. I appreciate the invite. This was great. How often do you do this? We do it every Monday at 1 p.m. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. cool. And the topics are what, typically entrepreneur business types? Yes. Or? Small business, entrepreneurship topics. Cool. Um, we're still creating the agenda the agenda for the rest of the year, but we debuted the show actually, and I don't think a lot of people know this, we debuted the show back in July, and we did six episodes as a test run to see how it would go, okay. and people loved it, so we bought it back. Our first show back, Stephanie, was last week, right? I think we came back in, in uh, last week because I was sick last month, and the difference between those shows and these shows is... It was in the summertime, so I got to sit outside with the beautiful greenery in the background. Now it's cold and nasty, and I have to sit inside. So. <laughs> but we'll be doing these every Monday at 1 o'clock, and you can look at my page or okay. Stephanie's page to find out. And this is Stephanie C. Harper. She's my co-host, so wave to everybody. And you can oh, circle yeah. her. Now she gave me her epizootic through the, through the uh, airwaves. So, see, I'm not feeling good this morning. <laughs> uh, that was a month I, ago. He I just got back from uh, Entrepreneur Magazine. On. Entrepreneur oh, Magazine how was Growth that? Conference. That was awesome. It was great. Okay. It was really cool. Um, it was interesting to hear all the uh, conversations. They they said the biggest uh, problem with most entrepreneurs is they get scared. One, mm -hmm. fear is always a problem. Mm -hmm. And two, when the economy is bad, that's when everybody shuts down. And they said the main success for these successful people, these multimillionaire entrepreneurs that have made it, they had struggles in the early 90s that they were the ones that were marketing and buying and spending during that time. And when that happened, uh, they ended up doing great because they were the ones that got their name out there during the hard time. Absolutely. So yeah, I thought right. those were some interesting points. Um, the people that, that spoke were fantastic. It was um, uh, the lady from a Shark Tank, Barbara. Yeah, Cochran. Cochran. Yeah. yeah. And then another guy was pretty good. Uh, Jason Falls, you'll probably know. And yeah. Grant Cardone. Yeah, I like Grant. Yeah, he does some He's pretty great funny. Stuff. He was yeah. animated. He was great. He is. he is. Now, Stephanie, right, we we talk about that in a couple of other episodes that we've done about the fear and about staying the course when the economy is bad and creating your own economies. Um, you guys are more than welcome to check out the archives that we've done, and that's at youtube.com slash magazine is the, for the YouTube archives. Okay. But tell them, Stephanie, a little bit about some of our, because we, we're very blunt and to the point. Yeah. What are some of we, our philosophies about entrepreneurship, Stephanie? <laughs> well, we just really talk about things that people come to us about. You know, mm -hmm. we get, uh, we're very active in our social media. We're very active in our communities. Um, and people are always coming to us with topics about, you know, how can I do this, or what did I do wrong, or, you know, it appears that what you're doing is working and what I'm doing is not working. And we talk about it, and, you know, not to bring this up again, but one of the things we talked about last week was, you know, the four hour work week. You know, does that work mm -hmm. for entrepreneurs? You know, mm -hmm. and we had people who were emailing us in the back end saying that we were throwing shade and, you know, you know, haterade and all that. And we were just basically saying it's not our reality. And we have, you know, 20,000 other entrepreneurs that are contacting us saying the same thing for them. Mm -hmm. So we're not. You know, we're just bringing things to light mm -hmm. that other people don't want to talk about because they don't think it's politically correct or they don't think that it's, you know, relevant. Okay. But we t we talk about real issues that we as entrepreneurs and we have um, some ladies that we're in talks with right now for a show. Um, a young lady that I just happened to meet at an event that I was at a couple of weeks ago who was complaining about money. 
And I asked her, I said, well, you know, would you like to come on and talk about it? You know, because that's the one thing we never talk about as entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. You know, no one comes on and says, hey, I'm a struggling entrepreneur. Yeah, because no they don't want to admit it. Says, Nobody wants to admit that, you yeah. know? Yeah, and so they're this, trying to keep well, their this young lady up, that we talk to, she's ready to admit it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because she wants to know how to do better. And she said, it's a grind. She said, I'm tired of going from networking meeting to networking to meeting where everyone has it together. And mm -hmm. so when I get to these entrepreneur meetings, I feel like I'm the only entrepreneur that's sinking because everyone else appears to have it all together. Yeah, and they're that all was the conversation. The it's the appearance. You yeah. know, we've all been there. You know, I can tell you that there's been times when I've called Adrian and said, that's it, I'm done. There's <laughs> been times when Adrian has called me and said, that's it, I'm done. And you know, <laughs> but but those are not <laughs> yeah. But those are not the stories that you hear because, of course, we get our footing and we keep going. But you but, have to, you know, in a way, you have to almost uh, uh, even convince yourself that you're on a roll because if yeah. you don't and you let the negativity come in and you really do look at your personal situation and say, you know what, I'm not going to make it next week. I'm out of money. Uh, right. You're not going to make it. And yeah, I don't care if you're there or you're not. I always tell people as an entrepreneur, you better have the same confidence with 50000 in the bank and $0.50 cents in the bank. And, and if you awesome. have that, you can make it because uh, it is that's a roller coaster. Awesome. It is. I mean, I've been declined getting my kids donuts. I'm like, crash, I thought that check went through. <laughs> so you, 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 <laughs> right. you know what? We all struggle. It's all there. And, and anybody that tells you they're a, a multi-million entrepreneur starting out is a bunch of baloney. Right. Uh, but well, it's, Chris, uh, we'll have to make sure that we personally invite you on that show. Um, okay. I'll we'll shave for that one. I'll shave. You'd be a great addition to that. <laughs> I'll shave and I'll look better. Absolutely. I'm, I'm a firm believer in it's, it is all from your intention. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I always find when you go to a networking meeting, meeting, the first five people who run up to tell you how well they're doing, they're the people who need help the most. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. good point. There, there's a level. Like your intention is good and positivity is good, but you, you can, as, as Thaddeus said, you can smell desperation. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, Thaddeus is, has the flu, so he can't come on cameras, but he is contributing via text. So just want uh, yeah. to acknowledge you, Thaddeus. Hi. Yeah, that, that's uh, – sorry I called you T there, but I'm honest to God the worst typist on the planet. Uh -huh. So I, I was just – the fingers weren't working. I, I'm and recovering from step, strep and a oh. sick husband, so. <laughs> yeah, everybody's getting sick. Oh, yeah, but yeah it's definitely crazy. We want you guys to tune into the show going forward. Um, like I said, like Stephanie said, we talk about the things that people, the, the not so pretty side of entrepreneurship, the right. real stuff that we go through. The as real stuff, owners. the real talk. Yeah, the real talk. As business owners, as moms, as dads, as, you know, husband and wife teams working together, everything that, the, the, the magazines and the media loves to glamorize entrepreneurship and everybody thinks they could be the next Mark Zuckerberg millionaire. It's right. not that easy. We talk about the real deal, the not so pretty mm -hmm. side. And we do it with the intention of educating, not right. to complain because we don't allow complaints in our show, but we're very real on our own social media you know, individually. Yeah. And we try to keep it very real on the show and we allow people to come on and discuss their situations because I look at it this way everything you go through is a learning experience and you may feel I'm the only person going through this at this moment but on doing a broadcast like this where other people are watching and they're like oh my god I thought I was the only one and it helps yeah. them it gives yeah. them that motivation to say okay I know I'm not alone so now let's see what I can do they pulled through it so now let me see what I can do to pull through I it totally and that's really agree. what the basis is for this show well, that was so. great because I totally agree. I, I, you know, you get when you're alone and stuff. After a while, you get beaten down. It was. I'll tell you what. Being in a group like this and invigorates you. Last week when I went to that entrepreneur deal, it was all man the gloom and doom of the economy and oh this is yeah. horrible and this is it. But when you get around entrepreneurs, they do have a passion. They always see the positive. They go for it. They take risks and they've got that strive that a lot of people don't have. And it's important to stay positive and not complain. Like complaining, you. It's funny you talk about complaining uh, mm. that lady the from the shark tank she got up there and talked about she goes I don't care how successful I've got someone working for me if they're complaining or they're fired I'm like Thank wow you. really but yeah, what if they're, then she goes I don't care if they're the top seller because a complainer will eventually eat away at your company and it it'll will if, even if they keep else. selling it'll affect others and it'll yeah. bring them down so complainers are out uh, so yeah. I thought that was really interesting 
Yeah, she's she's what she's straight a straight shooter. I did an interview with her. I'll post a link on my page later um, on my radio show, and she also wrote a piece for my magazine, the upcoming launch of the magazine. But you guys will be able to see. She's a straight shooter. She oh, doesn't yeah. take any any shorts with anything. She doesn't accept any excuses, and that's kind of how I am. I built my practice around that. I don't deal with whiners, and I look at it this way. Like you said, um, Chris, about the economy, I expected that to come from entrepreneurs. They have to sell, you know, their <laughs> conference, but I don't participate in this economy. I make my own economy because at the end of the day, regardless of what the markets look like, who's in office or whatever, I still have to feed my family. I still have to pay my bills. I still have to pay my staff and keep my business growing. So I don't I don't get into all of that, what's going on yeah. on NBC, CNBC, Fox, I don't either. whatever. So, you yeah. can't let circumstances or things in the outside world affect the way you're moving forward. Absolutely. Because if you do, then you're just going to ride the wave and go with the wave of what it is. Uh, back to uh, well, you said whiners too. I uh, my kids when they were two years old, uh, they knew a saying. After a while, by the time they came four, they go, "We know, Dad, whiners go to bed." I always said, "Whiners <laughs> go to bed." That's it. There's no debating, no arguing. Whiners go to bed. So after mm -hmm. a while, that's the same thing. Fire yeah. complainers and whiners go to bed. I like it. I like it. I'll use that with my grandkids. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm so glad I could make it today. Good. I'm glad you made it too. I've been looking forward to getting to hear you. And uh, somewhere down the road, mm -hmm. I want to pick your passion. I want you to come on my show because that's oh, what it's about. You. Why are you passionate about what you do? And I think you ladies would be phenomenal. Thank, Thank you. you. And Chris, we're going to talk. Yeah. Awesome. Stephanie, do you have any parting words for our I audience? Don't. Seems no, like thanks for the invite. We'll do it again. Time. I'll be back again. Remind me. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Chris. Bye, Bye, well, I'll be shaved next Aiden. time. I'll look, I'll look cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a well, great day, is, folks. See y'all. Thank you. Bye. This is Adrian Graham and Stephanie C. Harper signing off for Real Talk for Real, with Real Entrepreneurs. Make sure you tune in next week. You know how we do it. Come on here 1 o'clock Eastern, and we'll have a great topic coming up next. And be prepared for Real Talk. If you can't handle it, don't tune in. So for on behalf of my co-host and myself, have a wonderful week. And hey, like Chris said, no whining, no complaining, or you get put to bed. <laughs> That's Bye, right. everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>